Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and in this video we're going to be talking about Max C, that little hand trap that everybody just loves to hate. That little insect bastard that came into our lives six years ago in Storm of Ragnarok, and has ultimately just brought us nothing but joy and pain all wrapped up in one little wonderful package that says when your opponent's trying to play the game, tell them they can't. Or else. <laughs> but anyway, we're going to be talking about Max C today because Max C has recently been moved to the limited status on the most recent Forbidden and Limited list that will be going into effect in the next couple of days on March 31st, 2017. Now, with Max C moving from 3 to 2 and now to 1 on limited status, people are debating in the community whether or not you should still run the card, whether it be in your main deck or your side deck, with the justification of if you are on the side of not running it, the justification they use is it's bad any time you don't draw it turn one, and thus it's not worth running, because if you don't draw it turn one, you're going to draw it later, and it's going to suck for you. Now, there are multiple reasons that we could use to dissect this argument by itself as just riddled with fallacies of why you would think that Max C is only good turn one, and basically that all stems down to I guess you're just not confident enough in winning your like games going second, and maybe there's an error in your deck building if you have games that are impossible to win going second. Once you enter into certain game states, Max C is definitely a fine card you can draw off the top of your deck when you're in grind game scenarios, because then it will put you over the edge, it will put you over the top in terms of being the commanding position of that uh, game state, especially if you're just going back and forth, back and forth, breaking board, breaking board, but not really able to push through damage for game, but that's a completely different argument altogether. What I'm going to be focusing on today is the mathematics of why Max C is still completely fine to run at 1. I believe that you should definitely still be running this card. Putting the card to 1 did not make it not good at all. It made the card incredibly good, and even more so, it made it incredibly sacky. Because when the card was at 2 and when the card was at 3, you could have Max C, your opponent could stop and then answer your field with their own Max C. Like, your opponent didn't have to be committed into Max C's as often as they are now, because if you went first and got Max C'd, you could look at your hand, probably have a Max C and a trap there, and just give your opponent like one draw to at least commit your board a little bit and then pass to them, and then they have to play into your max C, plus whatever traps you set, and ultimately it's still just a perfectly fine situation. But with max C at 1, it's incredibly sacky, it's incredibly luck based, gotta be lucky to be good duelist, remember this, if max C is not in your deck list, you always have a 0% chance of opening it in your opening hand, you need that chance there, you know, if you're not running it, you will never have it, you will miss all the shots that you do not take, if we go into basketball terminology, but Basically, what we have here is we have a situation where Maxi is a very sacky card and it heavily benefits the player that draws it before the other player or if the other player never sees it. And that's just an incredibly like luck-based thing that you want to include in your deck building because Yu-Gi-Oh! is a game that unfortunately has a rather large amount of luck into it. But basically, let's go to the math portion of this, shall we? Now what we've got on screen here is we've got the Yu-Gi-Oh! deck probability calculator. Now this thing is a hypergeometric calculator that is free to use online. I will leave the link to it in the description and this allows you to plug in numbers and it allows you to find out the probabilities of what you have for opening specific cards or combinations of cards. Hypergeometric calculations for those of you that do not know is the calculations of math that requires multiple variables and multiple results that are changing based off every result that you take out of the equation or add to the equation. For example, if you have a 40 card max if you have a 40 card deck and you have a card that you run two of in that deck, let's say interrupted kaiju slumber for example. If you draw a card off the top of your deck for your opening hand, your first card, you now have 39 cards left in deck and if you did not draw one of your interrupted kaiju slumbers, the probability of the chance of you drawing Interrupted Kaiju Slumber for your next card changes. And that repeats every single time until you draw your entire opening hand of five or six cards if you're going first or second. And so what this calculator does is it does all of that complicated math and all that complicated work for you. You could do it manually. I've been known to do it manually. It sucks. Trust me. Don't mess with it if you don't have to. Let the computers do it for you. But what you have here 
is you have this probability calculator. Like I said, the link to it is in the description. And you can use this as a tool to build your decks and see what the probabilities of opening certain cards are. For example, um, and you can do multiple, uh, you can do multiple outcomes. Uh, for example, if I want two outcomes, let's say I'm playing, I'm trying to build my Dragoonity deck, right? And I want to know what the probability of me opening Dragon Ravine is alongside a Zephyros, which I'll play three of, a Phalanx that I also play three of, or Foolish Burial that could be either or. So, uh, Zeph, Phalanx, Foolish. And so what I have is I have three, I have three Terraforming and two Ravine in my deck, so there's five total copies of it, and I want at least one, and the maximum amount that I could draw is five. Now, with Zeph Phalanx Foolish, there are seven copies of it in the deck because I said I'm playing three Zephyros, three Phalanx, and one Foolish. And so once that is in there, it also puts all that in. And what you end up with is you end up with a 29.53% chance of opening Ravine plus either Zephyros, Phalanx, or Foolish Burial as one of your opening you know, hands, which is something you need to make the deck playable. Uh, so you can have all this. You can have multiple outcomes. And uh, you can do this as deep as you want it to and you can make it you can set it to where like the minimum number you can set to two to where like if I wanted to see what my probability was of drawing no less than two ravine but up to five I could do that as well but that's not what we are focusing on today as soon as this page decides to refresh because apparently my computer is chugging while I'm trying to record I need a new computer uh, please send help but anyway so in a 40 card deck with max C in your deck uh, if I can get it to type the name, Max C, previous format, when it was at 2, opening with 5 cards as your hand size, you had a 23.72% chance of seeing a Max C in your opening hand. Right? Seems like a respectable a respectable odds. Now, if you were playing a 60 card deck, one of the uh, That Grass Looked Greener decks of the previous format, you had a 16.10% chance of drawing one of those two max C's or both. This is a cumulative prop probability. Um, like if I wanted to see what my percentage of just opening one max C was, I would put this max number down to one uh, because then that's the pure raw probability of just drawing one max C. But because the max is two, you have the chances of drawing one or two max C's in that probability and that's why it goes up to 16.10% because there's the probability of you drawing one max C and then there's the probability of you drawing both max C's. It's the probability of drawing at least one max C. That's what this probability is meant for. But so 16.10, let's remember that number. Um, let's actually remember the 15.54 because that's a more reasonable number. That's the, literally the raw probability. The raw probability of drawing one max C in your 60 card deck from the previous format when it was at two. So your Infernoid decks, your Paleozoic decks, that sort of stuff. You had a 15.54% chance, and people still ran max C in these decks. Now, if we take if we take the deck size back down to 40, and we take max C from two down to one, we can only open one, so the probability is going to be the raw probability of your chances of drawing one. Your raw probability is a 12.5% chance, 12.5% chance of that being in your opening hand. That is still a very significant number. That means 12 out of every 100 games you play, raw statistic-wise, not factoring in human error and human uh, deck shuffling methods and all that sort of nonsense, are going to go into this and are going to basically affect whether or not like the outcomes change. And it's more than likely going to be greater than the raw probability because of the fact that, you know, shuffling is a random occurrence. It's not a purely statistical thing, unfortunately. And human error does exist. Uh, and as far as human interaction being implemented and uh, influence, human influence is what I'm looking for. But so in a 40 card deck, in your opening five, you have a 12.5% chance of opening max C. Now, this is literally only a hair under what the percentage of opening max C was in the 60 card decks last format when max C was at two. But people still ran max C, people still saw max C in those instances, and people still won games because of max C in that instance. It's just the math doesn't really take that big of a dip in terms of what your probability was of seeing max C. Like 60 card decks basically just become worse, and 40 card decks also become worse in terms of their probability to draw max C. But your 40 card deck is still going to let you see max C almost 13 out of every 100 games that you play, not including any outside influences like just human interactions. And so it's still just a wonderfully like fine number to have. Now if you bump up to 60 cards, 
But this is where it gets insane because any number under 10% is usually very underwhelming as far as your game states um, and like your chances of drawing it. A 1 of maxi and a 60 card deck, you have an 8.3% chance of seeing. So even that is kind of close to that 10% margin that I try to like stay around in terms of like certain things because you never really want to go below 10% because then it's basically like, why are you running the card? But even so, maxi is such a powerful card. And it's such a luck-based card now that you want to have it. You ra huh. I don't even want to begin to talk about why you should still be running this card because of the pure fact that if you draw it, you probably win. Let's be real here. Let's be 100% real. Uh, but basically, like, the justification that people give for Maxi uh, for why they aren't going to run it in their 40-card deck now that it's at 1 is incredibly, like, I don't know, just ludicrous? Like, I don't understand. Like, that justification doesn't work for any other card. <laughs> like, would you say I'm not going to run Raigeki because it's only good if I open it? Or would you say I'm not going to run Emptiness because it's only good if I open it? I'm not going to run Imperial Order because it's only good turn one. I'm not going to run uh, what other, like, X one of is there. I'm trying. I can't, I can't think of it. I'm drawing blanks. But basically, with every single one of that's on the list that could be included in your main deck, are you going to justify it with, this card's only good if I draw it at X point, so I'm not going to run it. Eh. Like, I don't understand the people's logic that are, uh, that are doing that. But mathematically speaking, you still have a fairly decent percentage of a way to open Maxi. You have, an, you have the same like sort of thing as opening with any one of, like in your deck. Like, if you're playing Raigeki, if you're playing Soul Charge, and you're specifically extra decking cards that are only possible during Soul Charge plays, all this sort of stuff, then you still just have just as much of a bearing to uh, be running Max C in your deck. Like, ah, uh, can't believe it. But anyway, this is all I wanted to talk about today. This is all I really wanted to talk about because of the fact that, oh my god, I cannot stand it when people try to use fake justifications for something when they literally just have no merit. And the merit of this Max C thing being bad if you don't draw it turn one, one is just false. It can easily become good depending on the game state that you find yourself in. And then two, you still have the chance to draw it if it's in your deck. 12 out of 100, 13 out of 100 if you want to round up. That's significant. That's still significant enough. Anything above zero is significant because if you have a 0% chance to draw Max C at any point during the match, but your opponent has a 13% chance, guess what? They're probably better off than you because they at least have the shot to draw the card that's the auto win going second, potentially. That's the way we're justifying this card. But anyway, I want to know what you guys think about this in the comments down below. I want to know what your opinions are on Max C. Are you going to be running Max C when it's at 1? Are you going to be not running Max C when it's at 1? I want to know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. Definitely, let's get this discussion going in the comments. Let's see what people's thoughts are and all that. Because mathematically speaking, Max C is still perfectly fine at 1. Because you can draw into it still. If you could not draw into it, you are going to be worse off than any opponent you play that can draw into it. In the pure essence of probability. But anyway, as always guys, thanks for watching. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below as I've already said. Let's get this discussion going, all that sort of nonsense. Be sure to like and subscribe to see more content that I'm going to be producing in the future. I'm definitely on my Yugi tubing grind recently if you haven't noticed. But other than that, if you want to, you can check out the links in the description to my Facebook fan page to connect with me, chat with me, whatever. As well as a link to my Patreon page if you want to help support me directly. And also, get in on a monthly giveaway that's happening at the end of this month for a couple of sealed boxes of Duelist Saga. I'm going to be shipping those out to a few people that are just finding it in the goodness of their heart to help me out. Just as a way to say thanks. I like to give back to people. I like, I like to help people that help me, you know. Scratch the back that is also scratching you. That's not the right saying. You scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. That's it. But anyway, if you're looking to acquire any cards I talk about in these videos or play in my dual videos, then definitely go check out Second Chance Gaming's website that is also linked in the description. It will indirectly support the channel as by you can see by this shirt, they are a direct sponsor of me and this channel, and I'm a big fan of how they do business with what I've experienced so far. So if you check them out, then definitely let them know that Phoenix sent you. But other than that, that's it. Again, super curious on your thoughts. Let me know about them in the comments down below. All that sort of nonsense. But other than that, thanks for watching. Thanks for your time as usual. And as always, take care, guys. I will see you in the next video.